Let's start with the horizontal line joining the pints 1, 2 and 8, 2. Notice that the y value of both pints is the same. When that is the case, the line is horizontal. Now y happens to equal 2 here, but it doesn't actually matter about the y value. To get the distance between the two pints, we only need to consider the x values. You can see here that we just subtract the x values. So we could take the largest x value, which is 8, subtract the smallest one, which is 1, to get an answer of 7. Let's look at this example here. We have the line joining the point one, minus 1, 2 to the point 8, 2. Again, as before, we just subtract. We subtract the x values, 8 minus minus 1 now. Now these two minuses together give us a plus, so we see that the answer is 9, and that's clear from the diagram if we just count the squares. Let's look at this example, the line joining the points minus 4, 2 and minus 1, 2. To get the distance, we subtract the x values, so the largest x value here is minus 1, and we subtract minus 4. Minus 1 minus minus 4 is minus 1 plus 4, which is plus 3. Let's look at this example here. The distance between the points 1, 2 and 9, 2 is 9 minus 1, which is 8. Suppose that we did the subtraction in the reverse order. So we take the smaller x value, which is 1, subtract the larger one, which is 9. If we do that, we get minus 8. So we can see that when we reverse the order of subtraction, we change the sign of the number. So if we take, say, 9 minus 1 and change its sign, how do we change the sign of 9 minus 1? We stick a minus sign in front of it and that gives us minus 9 plus 1 when we multiply in by minus 1 here. But minus 9 plus 1 is just the same as 1 minus 9. However, we want to develop a formula for the distance between two pints, um, which involves a positive distance. So we will define the distance between two pints in this course as a non-negative number. That is a number that is greater than or equal to 0. We cannot have a number that's less than 0, like minus 8 is. So, to ensure that d always comes out to be positive, regardless of which order we do the subtraction in, we need to take the magnitude of the difference of the x values. So we get the magnitude of minus 8. Uh, this is also called the absolute value of minus 8. Now the magnitude or absolute value of a quantity is a positive result, it's always positive. If we're getting the magnitude of a negative number, we just drop the minus sign. The magnitude of a number is actually the distance of that number to 0. So the distance of minus 8 to 0 is 8, where the distance is always a positive number. Now, if we do the subtraction in this order, the largest x value minus the smallest x value, well, we end up getting the magnitude of 8, but the magnitude of 8 is just 8. So the magnitude of a positive quantity is just the quantity itself. So the magnitude of a number is always positive. If the number is positive, its magnitude is itself. If the number is negative, its magnitude is got by dropping the minus sign. So we always get a positive quantity. So in general, for a horizontal line, the distance d between the two points is the magnitude of the difference of the x-coordinates. Now, a general point is called xy, as you know. We will use subscripts to differentiate two general points. We use the subscript 1 for one of the points and the subscript 2 for the other point. So we label one of these two points x1, y1. I happen to label this point x1, y1, but it doesn't matter. If we label this point x1, y1, we must label this one over here x2, y2 in order to distinguish these two points. Notice, by the way, that for a horizontal line, the value of y1 will be the same as the value of y2. In the examples we saw, uh, the y value of points on this line was actually 2. But it, it could be any value. We are only interested in the difference of the x values. The y value doesn't come into this. So, we get the difference of the x values, so we could either work out x2 minus x1, or we could work out x1 minus x2. The order of subtraction does not matter, as long as we take the magnitude. So, for example, the length of this line, as you can see from the diagram, is 9 minus 1, which is 8. So, if we work out x2 minus x1, we will get 8. We will get the magnitude of 8, which is 8. But if we do the subtraction in the reverse order, if we work out 1 minus 9, we will get minus 8. And the magnitude of minus 8 is also 8. So, these two things are always the same. So we can use either one of them for the distance between two points on a horizontal line. 
In a similar way, we can get the distance between two points on a vertical line. Notice that the x value for points on a vertical line is constant. For this particular line here, x equals 3. That's not important. What matters is the y values. So to get the distance between these two points, we get the difference of the y coordinates or values. So here we have to take 4 and subtract minus 2. 4 minus minus 2 is the same as 4 plus 2, which is 6. If we get the magnitude of 6, we just get 6. So the distance has to come out to be a positive number. Now if we did the subtraction in the reverse order, we would have minus 2 minus 4. That's minus 6. But the magnitude of minus 6 is plus 6. So we can subtract the y values in any order. As long as we take the magnitude, we will get the same answer for the distance. Taking the magnitude ensures that the value is positive. So when we are getting the distance between the two points, we can call one of them x1, y1. It doesn't matter which one. I'm calling this one up here x1, y1. But if we do that, we must call the other point x2, y2. Notice again that the value of x1 is the same as the value of x2. For this particular line, um, x is 3. Now let's consider this line here. This line is obviously neither vertical nor horizontal. It's the line joining the points minus 2, 3 and 10 minus 1. What we will do is we will construct a right angle triangle with D as the hypotenuse. Notice the coordinates of this point down here where the right angle is. The x value of this point is the same as the x value of this point because this point here is directly below this point. So the x value of this point is minus 2. However, the y value of this point is the same as the y value of this point over here because this point is d directly to the left of this point. Okay, see these two points are on the same horizontal line. So the y value is the same. So the y value is minus 1. We know how to get the length of this horizontal line from the previous part. All we do is get the magnitude of the difference of the x values. So we could take 10 and subtract minus 2. 10 minus minus 2 is 10 plus 2, which is 12. We also know how to get the length of a vertical line. We just subtract the y values. So we take 3 and subtract minus 1. 3 minus minus 1 is 3 plus 1, which is 4. Now, since we have a right-angled triangle, and we know two sides of the right-angled triangle, we can find the third side by Pythagoras' theorem. This tells us that the square of the hypotenuse, d squared, is the sum of the squares of the two short sides. So d squared equals 4 squared plus 12 squared. In other words, d is equal to the square root of 4 squared plus 12 squared. That's the square root of 160 to two decimal places d is 12.65. Now let's look at the general case. We call one of the two points x1, y1. I've called this one here x1, y1. Then we must call the other point x2, y2. Now look at this point down here. We already know that the x value or coordinate of this point is the same as the x coordinate of this point. So the x coordinate of this point is x2. The y-coordinate of this point is the same as the y-coordinate of this point over here, because these two points are on a horizontal line, so the y-coordinate of this point must be y1. So we know from earlier examples that the distance between these two points is got by getting the magnitude of the difference of the x-values. And similarly, the distance between two points on a vertical line is got by getting the magnitude of the difference of the y-values. So, to find d, we just apply Pythagoras. We square the two shorter sides. So in here we have the magnitude of x2 minus x1 squared plus the magnitude of y2 minus y1 squared. We sum those two squares, and finally we take the square root. This all comes from the fact that in any right angle triangle, the square of the hypotenuse, or the longest side, is equal to the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides. An important point is that if we square the magnitude of a quantity, we get the same result if we just square the quantity itself without taking the magnitude. So to see why this is true, let's suppose that we want to square the magnitude of 12. Well, the magnitude of 12 is just 12, so you can see that it's the same as just squaring 12. I put 12 in round brackets, but of course, since we're dealing with just a single term, we could leave off the round brackets. 
up here we will be dealing with you know two terms x2 minus x1 so we need to put in our brackets um, so squaring the magnitude of 12 is just the same thing as squaring 12 what about squaring the magnitude of minus 12 well we know that the magnitude of minus 12 is plus 12 so we've plus 12 squared but plus 12 squared is the same as minus 12 squared so we can see that it doesn't matter what the magnitude is it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative if we square the magnitude of a quantity it's the same as squaring the quantity itself without taking the magnitude so the magnitude of 12 squared is just 12 squared the magnitude of minus 12 squared is just minus 12 squared so that means that in this formula we can r remove these magnitude lines and just put x2 minus x1 in ordinary round brackets and of course we can do the same for y2 minus y1 so now at last we have our formula for the distance between two points in words we have to get the difference between the x values square the result then we have to get the difference between the y values and square the result and it doesn't matter what order we do the subtraction in, in because when we square our answers will be positive we sum these two squares and take the square root finally let's take another example we want to find the distance between the points minus 7 minus 4 and 3 minus 1 so we can do this without drawing out any diagram we call one of the points x1 y1 and the other point x2 y2 so I will label this point here x1 y1 and I must then call this one x2 y2 so to get the distance between the two points we just plug into this formula so we have to get the difference in the x values and square it so you can write down x2 minus x1 or x1 minus x2 it doesn't matter because we're squaring and then we have to square the difference of the y values so I can write down y2 minus y1 or y1 minus y2 I need to square that we just plug the numbers in so x1 is 3 then we have a minus sign x2 is minus 7 so we have 3 minus minus 7 that's 3 plus 7 y2 is minus 4 then we have a minus sign y1 is minus 1 so we have minus minus 1 that's plus 1 so we get 10 squared is 100 minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3 minus 3 squared is plus 9 to two decimal places we get 10.44 let's see this calculation again by referring to a sketch we could construct a right angle triangle with the distance that we're looking for as the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle this point here has coordinates minus 7 minus 1 the x value is the same as the x value of this point the y value minus 1 is the same as the y value of this point here so we could very easily read off what the vertical and horizontal distances between the points are the vertical distance between this point and this point here as you can see is 3 we're going from minus 4 up to minus 1 minus 4 minus minus 1 is minus 3 and the magnitude of minus 3 is plus 3 or minus 1 minus minus 4 is minus 1 plus 4 which is plus 3 to get the horizontal distance between these two points we subtract the x values of these two points so we have minus 7 minus 3 is minus 10 take the magnitude we get plus 10 so we've a right angle triangle whose two short sides are plus 3 and plus 10 so the hypotenuse is the square root of the sum of the squares of the two short sides so as before we get our answer square root of 109